to it. We're on Vertigo here, map number two between Astralis and Godsend. And this is a loser's match, so whoever will... Uh, well, elimination match, I guess. Whoever is going to be losing this one will be out of the major. And that's going to be a bit of a rough time. Oh. Astralis, they're on the CT side. Godsend are on the T side. So let's just get the show on the road. This map is, again, I think one of the candidates. If I had to pick a map where there's going to be... I actually think more so than Ancient. Because I actually think... Inventing stuff on Ancient is going to be very tricky. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's a lot more of a flat map. It's, it's just got, it's more sort of straightforward. That could be fine, not criticizing it yeah, for that at all, yeah. but it's just, it's, it is a little bit more straightforward. I think Vertigo is one of those maps where if you have some trick that you discovered three or six months ago, if you're going to be saving it, then you'd save it for this. True. You can still pull that. There's still so many options. The map is still so big. Still looking at teams when they want to hit mid and not. You still have to keep a player behind to watch mid on the T side because pushes can happen. Although you can go an entire half and not see a CT touch mid. Put a toe into mid. So it's very weird how the map still gets played out. And a lot of it comes down to style. And so, you know, as far as God Center concerned now, this is their map pick. They're going to be the ones deciding how this is going to go. And they're also the ones who get to set the pace. They start on T side, which is fantastic for them, I think, because it's not them waiting for the for the beating to continue from Astralis. They're the ones who can take the fight to Astralis now and just yeah. start smashing them. That is actually a good point. Yeah, and when you're on the T side, you, you feel like you're in control. You have the initiative to actually do something instead of just waiting around. So, yeah, I'll take that. As a good sign for godsend. Glaive! <laughs> Trying to play the ramp. I actually like that play, but um, he got hard called by Phelps. Saying, I don't believe you have those cards on your hand at all. I'm going to check and make sure. Dupree is sneaking all the way down deep. Lucky is going to get a kill there. Headshot on Phelps. But they're going to be able to hunt him down before he can get back around. So it's still a four on three. Dupree and Sip. Both of them actually trying to go aggressive. And... I don't really mind this. It's a pistol round. If you don't know what's happening on this ramp, you are going to be in a lot of trouble. So they're going to go look for the kills. Barton is on the other side. They actually almost stack up for it. Got to be careful here. There's two players on the other side, and the mild bomb has been committed as well. Two on two. Long range fight for the USP here. And Dupree is on the other. Crossfire Magus with the kill on Dumao. It's looking so good for Godsend, but now, not so much. Taco on his own. 48 seconds in a one versus two. He knows where they both are, but they're going to be walking in behind him. Magus with the kill. That is. It's another stolen round, I feel like, from Astralis. Yeah, they just, they're hitting their shots, and this is the issue, is that if you're running in on Godsend's side, yes, you actually get to execute most of your round. Look, they're able to move on through the smoke. They start off with the kill, but then the fight comes from Astralis as well. Look, Astralis were the ones challenging on ramp and looking for that brawl. And, and when they're already fired up after their win on Nuke... You know, in a normal kind of game, I would say, or in a more traditional game on, on Vertigo, if you lose both Glaive and Lucky in the A ramp, you just fall back, all the way back, onto the A side. You almost played like a retake, you're just hoping to get some USP shots. I love the fact that Astralis wanted to go aggressive and wanted to stop Godsend from, let's say, falling back to B or anything. They, they really wanted to be sure. Oh. Nice shot from Barton to take down Dupree. And well, actually, Magus doesn't have any head armor either here, so, so that... The Mac 10s that are coming through here could be mega dangerous. There's a headshot, it doesn't matter if he has a head armor or not, he's gonna be gone. That was sick, and that's the M4A1 down now as well, and that's the round almost already over. Yeah, no, Astralis, that is it. Godsend winning every duel, winning oh. every duel. Oh, man, that's where you wish if you were Glaive you had slightly more sensitivity. You yeah. could see him kind of tracking Just behind. Can't keep up. Great round out of Godsend. That's what they needed. High fives all around. That is the round that they need to right off the bat here. Yep. I mean, winning the pistol maybe would have been fun as well, but actually sometimes winning the second round here could just, you know, be put you into a really great position, right? They're going to be able to, to save all of the guns, the M4 that was dropped here. What a shot. Yeah, this is so good. But that's the that's the beauty of that kind of uh, play is that you run up as a group. There's too many targets for Magus to just focus on, and you you need to really just put bodies on the screen in front of them. You can't let them have those duels where they have the superior firepower. So a one v one is always going to favor Astralis in that situation. Whereas if you have two or three guys of Godsend just running up at once, sure he's got an M4A1, but he's not going to kill all of you. So nicely done there by Godsend. This is a four spy round coming in here from Astralis. Uh, well, it's kind of like a weird half by HE gimmick round. I don't know. Yeah. They haven't bought Kevlar. Yeah, they just have three of them, so it's a, it's a nice idea. I kind of like it. Smoke on Glaive as well. That did nothing at all. Did no. not actually connect.
kind of hoping that they would just hold on to the HEs for when the Execute comes in. That's what I thought as well, that they were just going to sort of play around with the Deagles up here, and then if they take the bomb site, you, sh you try getting a kill. That's probably what they're thinking. Normally, there could be even just be one person on B. They already take one down. Why would there be two now? But there is, in fact... All the smokes around here, all the weird little angles that you can be taking shots with. I mean, having the silencer, that may be just enough for them to think it's worthwhile. But, I mean, Dupree just made short work of them here. Was that just yeah. worthwhile? But, I mean, Dupree just made short work of them here. Was that just yeah. comms? I, mean, I suppose Phelps wasn't uh, wasn't aware that Dupree was at his back. Nobody was telling him. They weren't aware of where Dupree was playing from. That's, again... I think, well, yeah, and it could also just be that Phelps' role in that play is to hug that right-hand side sure. and just move up. So he's like, that's what I'm doing. You guys will have to do the rest. Um, and maybe that would have been possible, but there was a flashbang against the first guy that Dupree was fighting. So, yeah, something definitely got a little bit messed up in that moment. Now, if you're on the godsend side, though, you're just telling yourself, that's okay, we lost that round, but they only had two people left alive. If we come back and win this next one, they're going to be back to pistols again, and we can just keep winning. So, I don't think they're that worried about it. Glaive going to be moving out behind the flashbang. That's such a setup. And he gets a double kill behind it. Lucky on the assist, and he's going to get a kill of his own. That is... That is just a good, a, a really good way to win a round. That is a bold duel by Lucky, and he meant no, does not find the shot either. So okay then, but Lucky, that was such a man fight that he just took there. He had to win that duel, and he did it. If he loses that one, it's a a very awkward spot, I think, for Astralis on that bomb site. It opens an avenue onto the bomb site for Godsend to take advantage of, and instead now it's Taco alone in a one v four, just kind of hoping that somebody's in mid, hoping that he's gonna find somebody here to take a duel with him. Uh, 38 seconds left. It's it's so unlikely that you can win a round like this if you're if you're Taco. You just have to. I mean, the, the bomb is actually so far away that he definitely can't. Yeah. But yeah, a kill or two here would definitely make the make it a different round. Once again, don't want to let them get away with four rifles. He's walking up. He's just not finding the luck. They're right around him, and he has no idea. Trying to be real silent, getting down. He's gonna find at least one there. Knife is almost out. He's gonna go down to make his. I think Astralis are just fine with this particular round. They only lose two players. That's enough to build the economy, and we're back into mm. a three-on-three scoreline, a three-to-three scoreline here. Yeah, and uh, Astralis also looking like they're starting to hit their stride here. But the, this is the difference as well when you actually have the nades and the rifles to work with. As uh, we'll see, yep, Lucky taking that fight straight up and winning it. That was sick. But uh, this is the difference now that you actually have the grenades on uh, Astralis on the CT side. So you can play with your setups. Although, as I say that, Glaive and Dupree, did they drop? They might have dropped nades for the rotations. Yeah. I'm thinking that's what's going on here. Very well could have been. Yeah, MP9 as well on Dupree kind of showing that they have a read of the economy. Taco has picked up an AK. So he could still be dangerous. This could mm -hmm. be kind of an interesting round. They have smokes. And a Molotov, if they put up the wall of smokes and Molotov out that position that Magus is in, they can actually do a lot of damage here. Wow, just straight up, forget about the nades, just winning the fight. That is so well done. And it's definitely, uh, I mean, that's Taco opening up the B-bomb site completely for business. But this is, again, why you set those nades down in uh, CT spawn. It's one of those maps where you can rotate through, and if you were to drop grenades, your rotators from uh, A to B or B to A could actually pick up some extra utility to work with going into the retake if necessary. But now, I mean, it's a four-on-four. Four. They have to know that this is a Nico, though, still. I mean, the, the bomb is actually so far away that he definitely can't. Yeah. But yeah, a kill or two here would definitely make the, make it a different round once again. Don't want to let them get away with four rifles. He's walking up. He's no idea. Trying to be real silent, get take to Maui. He's, he's miles away. He can never get anywhere to help out. That is so ridiculous. That is just a, a beautiful Molotov to burn them out. That's not if you're real. on the Godsend side, but man. Not, yeah, exactly. Not if you're God, it, that's a nightmarish Molotov if you're on Godsend. But uh, for Astralis, they were both hiding in the same spot and a perfect Molly. That just could not have gone better for the retake. Oh, Astralis again with a little bit of a fortunate break going their way. And now, I mean, four to three, they've taken the lead on the CT side and Godsend. Well, keep in mind, round of eco for Godsend last time. So now they actually have the AKs. They have the nades. And let's see, do we get a change of pace out of Godsend? I do kind of wish uh, that we would see something perhaps a little bit more aggressive, something quick and clever towards that B bomb site, for example, just putting the pressure on. Well, we're back over here towards A, showing some presence. 
play of push down. This is a this is a play that we see fairly often. It could be very hard to check if you're coming in from the T side. So I just, you normally don't die into that position because you're surprised by it or you've never seen it before. It's just it can be really there tricky to, to check that deep. I like this play, but Magus this time a little bit more ready. Oh. Way more ready. He hits the dink on ladder as well. That's nearly a triple. We'll count it almost as that. And um I mean, last time, and I can understand why they're thinking, you know what, we, we beat him last time at 1 AK. Let's just try and, and actually rush him down. And he just took them all with him. Just blow it up. Just blow it up. Quick change of pace onto the B side is what I really wanted to see. And God sent they almost do it. Apart from, I mean, Magus just, it really is sick to see when they've decided that A1 is the rifle of choice. The pros have such sick aim. Oh, nice done, nice done. I mean, a couple of kills Speaking there, that's well done. But also, I mean, Dupree actually won that. He was running and gunning with the MP9. He made that look so easy. Mm -hmm. It's another round for Astralis, but this time more expensive. Dupree? And again, all those okay, all those things go. actually matter at the end of it, right? Does make a difference. Five to three. Bomb plant as well on top. Godsend with a round loss bonus. They could probably buy here. They could probably keep the pressure on to Astralis. Sure. But again, we'll get to see Magus again. And I mean, just the aim with that A1S is so satisfying to see. If you have a player who keeps his cool in those situations and isn't just spraying and praying, but actually controlling it, you can be so effective. So really cool to see there from Magus. What a hold from him. Star level stuff. And now 5-3 to three in the lead, Astralis. And God sent. Ah, they were thinking about it. They were thinking about the changeup. Straight on to B. No time wasted. I like this. This could be really effective. Yeah. Good setup so far. Molotov out. That Molotov also kind of gives the game away a little bit. I'm surprised that no one is at least rotating to middle for Astralis right now. They have one player there. Magus with the setup. He's going to spray down Lado. A little bit of a nade out. If he, if he peeks to his right, they're just so ready for it. Oh, but he was ready too. He had seen that before. And Taco was nearly dead behind it. So... A little bit scary. Phelps has been left behind, but they're running, and that's something you can't really do on this map. Yep. If you run to rotate to the A-bomb site, they're going to hear 100% of the time. Do you think it's the double pump? Because that, that is what you could do here. You could go for that fake where you act like you're running off towards A, and instead oh, you rotate no. back over towards B. Oh, Taco can't catch a break. <laughs> that grenade followed him into the corner. You he saw him looking at it, too. Just like, well, this is my life. He's so dead. Yeah, but I mean, at that point, just... Toss yourself onto it. Try and see if you can cover the nade so your teammates stay alive at least. Brutal. Dumao is going to be going down in the middle and Phelps and Bart in the left. Two versus four. Still about 30 seconds on the clock and Dupree's pushed up to a really awkward off angle again. There's a huge angle that you have to cover when you make the swing from where, from where Phelps is going forward. And they could be at any point during that. They could be under the stairs. It's just, it's, there's so much to look for. Mm. Phelps Struggling. being found by Glaive here. It, this, unlike the other rounds, is a huge change of pace. There is no bomb plant. There's four people surviving for Astralis. It means you could t look at the cash. They have so much to work with right now. And God sent, they just have the round loss bonus. Yeah, it was a, it was a change of pace in the, in the sense that, yes, they tried to get some early pressure on B this time, God sent, which was really cool to see. Um, unfortunately for them, Magus is just too hot to handle right now. They can't really keep up with him. He's always getting that one kill at least. And that's throwing Godsent for a loop. They don't quite know how to handle it. And it's going to be tough to handle it if you don't have your heavy hitters carrying a bit of the load right now. And I mean, I am calling Phelps right now, just saying Phelps needs to be stepping up. He's only got two kills right now going into the 10th round of this first half. And for one of your star level players, you need more. You really do need him to be doing a bit more here for the team. So Godsent. Having a little bit of a chat. Now's the time for it, right? It started off pretty well. They converted that f that round after losing their pistol. They got right back in the mix. But now Astralis are... They're just... They're deploying their way back. And, mm -hmm. and way too quickly, right? And again, as long as the economy was low on the CT side, you could kind of weave a little bit of a story for Godsend around cracking the economy one round to get back into it. All that. That's not true anymore. And that becomes a big problem. Six to three right now in favor of Astralis. Remember, they won the first map, so... If this keeps up, it's gonna be it's gonna be just more and more tricky. MP7 picked up on Lado. Bit of a rare sighting these yeah, days. That's not something we see too much. Is it MBK channeling his inner MBK? What's going on here? Um, technical timeout getting called here. I'm assuming because the Must clock be. has not resumed. Nope, there it is. So maybe a little hiccup, a little sound issue, whatever. Got that squared away nice and quick, and we're gonna get live in about 10 seconds time. And it is looking like we will get. 
a weird kind of buy coming in here from Godson Rifle yeah. MP7. That's not something we see very often, yeah. Just a little bit rare. Just a little bit. What are you going to do with that MP7? Is that a miss buy? I mean, was no. he, did he fat finger that and was hoping for a Mac 10? He's got, I'm sure he wanted it. They bought a Mac 7 as well on Roomba, on, on New. True. I'm sure they, they just have different preferences. One of these eccentric players, right? Yeah, I love it. I think it's great. All right. All right. Well, mm. to make this round work, though, for God's sake, you need need probably a little bit of a gift going your way. Dupree could be one of them. The three people about to jump him. He's just going for the straight spray, but the Tech-9 somehow just absolutely beats him to it. That's that's a fight. At least you, you're, you're expecting Whoa. one kill. Another headshot. This time unlucky. They're just in the middle and actually doing so much damage. Flashes are coming out everywhere. It's just an unstoppable train making its way through middle. Meg is finally going to be trying to throw down a bit of a log onto the rails there and it's triple what? for him unbelievable that's the bomb Anders. that is the bomb yeah that's a bad move oh they can't pick it up it, no it does move it back they, they probably could have had it you're right samla phelps now one versus two and he's going to be making the jump out that's a far jump and lucky dinked from earlier still able to get the shot oh my god what was this round anders no how are you picking that with the bomb they got carried away didn't they and they're like, you know what? This is it. We're, 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 this is so good. Yeah, but they, and they, I mean, presumably, Did he just not know? Do you, do you think he just, he probably just didn't know he had the bomb. Could have been. Could have been. Or he thought, you know what? They're fighting in middle. I can just sneak in this kill. <laughs> I don't know. It's not worth it. You're right. The bomb plant probably would have been a better move then. Seven to three. And moving into the 11th round. Godsend. Just everything about this so far for this best of three has been heartbreaking for Godsend. Pretty much all the way through. Glaive sneaking down, flashed for the minute, but they're not checking him. So Phelps, oh, he's lucky to be alive. That smoke kind of oh. saved him, but he's doing so much damage. And Glaive is still hanging around. He's like, you know what? Yeah, I've what even this is this drive-by? Yeah, <laughs> 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 just flinging bullets out there. Whoa, lucky getting, uh, he's getting got. Back to a four on four. That's the AWP out of picture. Lucky, not quite hitting the shots right now, but I mean, his teammates are doing the work. To pre's info, he's in T spot. Oh yeah. He's so deep in there. Glaive is going to be found. And the bomb is making its way over to that A bomb site. Magus with the kill. And Sip with one on Barton as well. He's back into a 2 on 3. And again, Dupree. Where is where he is actually going to end up? He's just hanging around. He's expecting them to maybe fall back. Oh, see, so he's just got them boxed in now. I mean, either way, that's a good play. Because if they go for this and try and get the bomb down, he's going to be able to rotate pretty quickly and shoot them in the back potentially. If they come back to the other bomb sample, then they're definitely dead. So, yeah, he's just turned it into a lurk now and trying to see if he get that flank. And Dumao taking a fair bit of damage, actually, from that. Got to be careful. This round so has to be won. Godsend need this so badly. Yeah, they're so starved for information right now. That's the thing. They, they suspect it's the usual play to see now these flanks come through up on ramp. Nice HE on Lado, but that gives away Dupree's position. He's fine with that. He wants to draw attention to himself to give his teammates room to work with to find these players. Ooh, good flashbang to set up, but they still cannot find Megis. He's going to get the headshot on Lado, Dupree, and now Dumao sneaking through. He gets one of them, and it's almost time. He's got it. That kill did the big difference, and... I mean, it's it's a kind of a sloppy round from Godsend in a, in a bunch of different ways, but whatever it takes right now, whatever they can uh, get to make it work, it's going to be good. Four yeah. to seven. Without a doubt. I mean, you just need to get the rounds on the board. Four, if you can get maybe five or six, I think, as far as Godsend are concerned, with how this half has gone so far, they'll just be counting themselves lucky to get that much. But now, because they all die in that round, <laughs> they really don't have a whole lot to work with at that point. You're getting the round win bonus, and that's it. Yeah. Whereas you're going to have Astralis <laughs> fully equipped on their side with nades, everything they could want. Your buy is going to look a little anemic. You're not really going to have a whole lot to work with. I, I, I feel like this is the most tragic best of three I've seen in a long time <laughs> where it's just one team. Why are you gritting that, Anders? I don't know. Cause I, I don't know what else to do. It's, it's either that or I have to start crying, and I don't want to do that on the stream, you know? So you're just, right. It is just upsetting. Normally, the luck is somewhat evenly distributed amongst, you know, or the, or the lack thereof between yeah, the teams. Yeah. Like, you, you kind of, you know, you have some, some misfortune going your way, but then you kind of get it back later on. It, this is nothing like that. It feels like Godsend every single time. They're just ending up with it. You're right. They win around, but everyone dies. They have, a, <laughs> they have some good 2v2s, but they just can't really finish them. It's unbelievable. I don't know. It is really tragic right now what's happening to Godsend. And keep in mind, guys, this is it. Uh, this is, well, Astralis are currently up one map in this best of three, and this is an elimination series from the Major. 
You lose this, you go home. That is it. Oh, Dupree. Dupree, you savage. He knew that he could not fall back from that position. But the fact that he even got one of those kills is still pretty impressive. Leave. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of people there. Lucky, do you want to stick around here? This is very common in Molotov. They don't have one right now. So actually, this is one of those times where he is really safe in this position. He's going to get a kill, and now he's going to start to fall back. Crossing into the bomb site. Very dangerous. That could have been oh, actually a double kill for Barton. I don't know. Astralis getting maybe huh. a little bit too loose with it here because they probably at least could have guessed that someone would have moved up. So a little bit shocking. Sip is going to be going down, trying to get the jump on, on them there. This is a weird round here for Astralis, in what my a, opinion. Yeah, what a bizarre round. Just completely unaware of the fact that Godsend could have pushed up yellow. They didn't have anybody there watching it either. So I don't... Uh, I mean, Astralis have to have been aware that that was a risk, but it didn't look like it from judging by their play. And now they're in a weird retake. Nice off angle, but Magus again trumps them. Gets that kill. Two on two now with the flash over the top. This is going to be so difficult now for Godsend to hold. Yeah, it, it actually could be. They're going to be running up before the fight even happens. That's interesting. Lucky has no idea that he's behind there. But Dumal, he goes for a spray and a reload. You don't have time for that. There's a second left on the defuse. Oh, no. He just gets away with it. The tragedy <laughs> continues for Godsend. It's so ridiculous. What is this Greek tragedy that we're watching right now? He runs out of bullets on the spray. Oh, man. I can't even wrap my head around this. The, nothing is working for Godsend. They cannot catch a break. And just re-watching this now. I mean, that was sick. This is really nicely done here from Barton. He fighting the good fight. And Lucky had no idea where this guy was either. It's, uh, it's outrageous, Anders. Telling you right now, Sambler, if, if they actually are God sent, it's more in like the Jesus sense where they sent to be tortured on <laughs> earth. That's kind of, that, ki that kind of thing that's, that we're witnessing here is unbelievable. Their fate, it's a grim one right now. And uh, the, thing, the thing is that uh, I don't think they're going to it willingly right now. They're trying to fight back, Anders. They're fighting about against it. It's just, it's inevitable. Yeah, this is it's, it's so heartbreaking. And unlike, I mean, on Nuke, at least you could say, even if they'd won some of those 2v2s, they still probably do not win that map. Or they definitely don't win Nuke. This map is different, right? 8 to 4. If they win that spray through the smoke, what a difference it would have made. Would have been 5 to 7 instead. Sip looking over the smoke. Lucky is there as well. Trying. Not quite hitting the shot, but again, it is at least slowing them down. Deep grenade, and it doesn't do nearly any damage, but wasn't that far off. Cones flying everywhere. And um, 13th round, starting off with a bang here. It's going to be a two-for-one trade, favoring Godsend. That is what they needed. They didn't. Know. They took some damage on Dumao as well, but Phelps goes down. Glaive is straight back into it, looking for a follow-up. It's going to be Magus to get that instead, and we're in a two-on-two. Godsend have had this position many, many times throughout this best of three so far. Without actually being able to do much about it, they keep losing these important rounds. This one has to go their way. It simply must. They're fighting for their major lives here, and if they can't find a way to bring this one home, it's just going to be trouble. There's Lado. Going down before they even get the bomb planted. And now it's Barton on his own. And Megas jumping into him. Almost managed to knock him out. The headbutt spray is there. But Lucky is still alive. <laughs> He's got six health left with that AWP. Molotov to put a bit of pressure on Barton. Still got 30 seconds. So you can wait out the Molotov here. But that AWP on the other side is the big equalizer against this AK. And Barton knows it. Tries a little bit here with the bomb plant. He's going to go all the way through, not even faking it out. So now the pressure is unlucky. He's just holding the... He knows he has to move at one point. The gun barrel showing? I don't think so. I don't think so. He's slowly creeping back out. I think Barton has the right idea. Lucky, he still has a smoke like last time, but you can't expect for him to run out of bullets again. So this time it should be favoring the T side. It should be Godsend winning this one. Oh, but Lucky, he gets the headshot, and he is straight on the bomb. It goes the way of Astralis again. Unbelievable. Unbelievable that he walks into that. God, I mean, that's, again, it's all just lining up for Astralis. Lucky happens to be holding the correct angle with the op right when his opponent peeks into his crosshairs. A bit of that is Lucky, obviously, but it's also a bit of it, you know, him just living up to his name. Having it break his way like that. <laughs> it's, all, it's unreal. Godsend.
cannot get anything to break their way right now in these clutches. It's just not happening for them. Nine to four. Big lead now for Astralis on the CT side of Vertigo in this first half. Round Man. number 14. This hopefully will uh, will be a different round for God's And This time the nade does land and it does do a fair bit of damage to follow up Molotov into the corner. Glaive again, playing it aggressively on that A ramp. He snuck down. I don't think they realize. Oh, he's just going to swing against them. Easily takes out Phelps. He was just caught sleeping by the box. Godsend. I mean, they're being pressured so much without even, without even being allowed to take the initiative. We actually introduced this first half by saying, at least they're on the T side. At least they can take some initiative and just dictate where the fights are going to be happening. But that's not even true half the time here. <laughs> no, it's not. Exactly. But now they maybe have a little bit of an opening here to take advantage of. Quick rotate down to the B site. Hoping that they can actually find a way in. There is already an Astralis player on point here, though. And, yep, Dupree not going to get caught sleeping. He finds the kill. Brings it back to a three-on-three. -three, and he's got the backup now. Lucky is showing up with that AWP looking for a shot. And, well, smoke to create a little bit of room. But there's still a chance now for Godson to get this bomb planted. All right. They get a kill as well. Two-on-three with the bomb down. It's everything that you could wish off for right now for Godson. Once again... It's got all the makings of another tragic round, but, but really, if we just forget about what's been happening so far, this is a one round. There are no nades left on Astralis. This should be an almost impossible retake. Dumao take care of Sip. It took a minute there, but he's able to find the shot on him. And now it's just a pre to one versus three with not that much time left, really. Yeah, pick up the AWP and try and see if you can make an exit instead. If he runs too far, he'll run into Taco. It is going to be a fifth round on the board for Godsend, finally. And I think Dupree doesn't even realize, yeah, he's... Probably dead, almost certainly dead here, especially while reloading the AWP. Oh, Here's he the shot. Yeah, he hears the footsteps. He's like, wait. No, <laughs> no. not happening, bud, not happening. And they actually have no money on the Estrada side, so Godsend could come up with 9-6. I almost feel like given how all this has unfolded, if they get to 9-6, it's, <laughs> it's probably going to be okay, maybe. It's their map pick after all, yeah. right? So their CT side, you got to expect that they're going to have some tricks up their sleeve, that they'll have prepared some stuff here in this uh, all-important series. You know that uh, these players aren't getting much sleep right now. They're probably so focused on just staying alive in this major. So God sense, you know, where I'm not, I'm not going to call it just yet because, again, if Lady Lux just starts winking their way a little bit, right, just giving them a little smile, not a, not a grin, just a little bit, you know, corner, uh, it could still go their way. <laughs> or Dupree can just rip your head off, Taco. That's also an option. Please, <laughs> please. They don't deserve this. This is cruel. Phelps going down oh. and Magus with the kill on that. Oh, I don't know what they've done to deserve this. Why is it <laughs> happening? Dumao and Barton, two versus five. It's absolutely, what we're witnessing here is just, it's got to be one of the most emotionally devastating. Again, this would be hard if it was just a random online game, but we're at the major and you're about to get knocked out. And every single round, you, you just run into the, the maximum amount of tragedy every single time. It is, it is getting to that Greek uh, level right now. I, we're, we're, we're starting to see some real horror show stuff. I mean, Dupree's now got this crazy off angle that he hasn't used yet this half, so there's no reason for Godsend to expect this whatsoever. Oh. And there it is. The double kill. He's got the drop, and he gets that solid it's round. It's a flawless round yep. out of having a Deagle and a Scout. It's just, it just works. 10 to 5 in the first half in favor of Astralis. Man. Forget about the Titanic as a tragedy. This is... We've reached new levels. This is, this is really getting it, and... Uh, I don't think they're coming back, Anders. You know, you, Astral, you can whisper it all you want, but uh, this time everyone is going down into the cold <laughs> deep. There's no survivors. Oh uh, well, let's see. CT side now for Godsent. This is it. All right. So all of the pressure on you and Taco. Let's not forget that Taco is here, and he is leading this team. He's done tremendous work for them so far. The tournament yesterday had a great performance, even though it wasn't quite enough to get his team the wins. He was there doing the damage. And, well, now, as far as Godsent are concerned, as far as Godsent are concerned, could be their time to shine on the CT side, looking for the headshots. Phelps, if any time, if there was ever a time to wake up, it's it's now. Yeah, you need it. <laughs> We've said it so many times. It started to become a little bit repetitive. 
10 to 5. And here we go. Setting up on the A-Ramp. Flash goes into the sky. They're going to be able to isolate Phelps, but he actually gets a kill and just ducks into the smoke. That's shocking that he's still alive here, but it should be a bomb plant for Astralis. And they still have an HE there on Lucky. They're going to be throwing that deep into the bomb site. Didn't really do any damage. They re-smoked the right-hand side of it, so that's a long time. That got sent. They can't really wait for that smoke to disappear. They actually have to do something before that goes away, because otherwise the round is almost over at that point in time. Five versus three now for the retake. It's all looking so good. Meg is getting a kill. Just a bit of a hiccup there. But they need to keep going, trying to find it. No one's on the bomb yet. Astralis, they knife out Lucky. No, come on. That's too much. Dupree on his own. He's going to get shut down. And the defuse is going to be in. Godsend will win the pistol. That's your job well done. There we go, Anders. The strong start. Hopefully this is enough to get Godsend just flowing. Now they get that uh, pistol round win. And now they actually get to buy up. Astralis are going to go for the force themselves. So they're feeling it right now, Astralis. It's a bomb plant. We're going to be able to afford to get a few rifles of our own. And now we're going to be in that awkward spot where you're not really sure which team actually won the pistol round. Uh, just because they all have guns. And <laughs> it's, a, it's a fairly even buy if you look at it. So... Astralis now looking to just put an, an end to this godsend party in think, the second half. I think Lucky pulling out that knife, that's like his realization that, you know what? Everything is working today. <laughs> Luck and fate is on our side. Let's just yeah. go for it. <laughs> it but, do, but is it tempting? Is it too much? Has he switched it? <laughs> Did he curse him, his team by doing that? It's just... Uh, I feel like that's pushing the, the upper limits on what you can get away exactly. with. Exactly. And also, will you have used up all of your luck uh, for the tournament, you know, in this one series after that? <laughs> it's possible. Uh, it's not done yet. You know, this is the thing. Astralis, or Astralis and Godson both are in that uncomfortable situation where these are all elimination matches for them now. Their yeah. backs are to the wall. They have to win out from here in order to make it into the next stage. And even then, you're not done. Then it's the next stage. You're not even into the playoffs if you make it out of these groups. You get another group phase. Yeah, it's wild. Taco to get the kill on the pre, but a good return from Magus over on the B stairwell. So they're going to be trading one for one over on that side. Just a little bit of noise here at the A ramp being made as well. You kind of... Oh, wait a minute. They're actually so deep in here. Glaive just... He wants to see if he can close out this round. And if he finds that kill, that's probably will do the job. But a good defense from Phelps. Actually, a stunning defense from Phelps getting that double kill. That's... Again, this should be a one round already here. Two versus four. Mm -hmm. Even with the time that's left. They, sh they should be able to set up trade positions where every time Astralis get a kill, if they do, you can you can quickly get one back as well. Sure. I'm just curious to see if Phelps, if this is it, him, him just going to start waking up here in the second half. He had such a quiet first half. I bet if he starts getting single and double kills on the CT side, that's all Godsent need to get competitive here. If they can rely on him to start carrying some weight. So now, well, Glaive, he's got Magus with him. They're going to go for the peak. He knows the usual angles. Unfortunately for him, Phelps was crouching at the time, and so they do not spot him out. But Magus gets the drop. What? Two beautiful kills coming in for Godsend. No way should they get those. Yeah, Dan, you think the M-Force would be favored in that moment, but didn't turn out that way. 10 to 7. I mean, 10 to 7 scoreline. If I just... If I just wipe my memory of all the misfortune that gods have run into, you'd say, this is looking great. This is actually pretty good. They could definitely... What you want to see? Just bombardment. And they don't uh, go for the force this round. No Kevlar. Lato not going to get lucky. That's a little unfortunate. The kills are going to go to the M4 with Phelps. So he's going to get those feel-good kills. One of them goes the way of the MP9 at the end. That's always painful in those anti-ecos because you really just want that MP9 to be farming. Uh, it's $600 per kill instead of $300 per kill. That adds up. If you get a few kills, there's your full set of nades for the next round. So, I mean... We had that Mac 10 ace earlier. That was pretty true good. True for Magus. Gone nuke. He was uh, feeling good after that. But um, in terms of the score, right? 10 to 8. Well, now we got to see. Is, do Astralis have anything to pull out of the hat here? Uh, to catch Godsend off guard, because this is Godsend's map pick. Godsend have got that momentum going on the CT side. Oh. And here's the aggression coming in from Phelps. Close on the ramp. Do they realize that this is even an option? It doesn't look like it. He's got two players who've made it past him. Why would they have a check for that? It, that's, such a, that's such an immensely brave move from Phelps. Now, he's going to start to fall back. They did get the kill on Sip as well, but I just I don't think I've seen that very often. That's one hell of a jump. He's going to get caught, though. They're trying to get back. Glaive will go down and return. So they still trade favorably. Godsend still ahead here. Three versus four. They're going to be fine for the minute. Setting up towards the B bomb side though. If Taco goes down, 
Still is a big problem because the follow-up rifle here is still a FAMAS and that's a clean shot. Now the FAMAS is trying to hold it. Barton is getting into position. Flash doesn't do too much to him. He's out on that deep angle. Gonna go down to Lucky though. It's now a two-on-two -two and the spray from Dupree is so good. What is going on here, Anders? They're just fighting their way into the way. It's a really good call for Astralis to go back and, and sort of fish for that kill. And once they get it, they know. They're so ready for it. It's a really, really smart move. Lado now, one versus two. He has a smoke, so theoretically if he can find the one kill and turn it into a one-on-one, -on -one, he could try and play around that smoke and the defuse. But it's a hard game to play right now, and he's not going to be able to check everything. Dupree will take him down. It's a good triple for Dupree in this round, and generally he's been playing incredibly well here on Vertigo along with Megisk. Mm -hmm. It's going to be 11-8. to eight. Well, those two have certainly come online in this series for Astralis. They were absent yesterday. That's You can't get around that. We weren't seeing Magus and Dupree pull their weight. It was really Glaive who was trying to lead from the front, trying to make the plays happen and trying to create space. And the rest of his teammates were kind of lackluster in their gameplay. Today, however, the two stars are really standing out for Astralis. And that's exactly what needs to happen. It's a point that Thorin was really elaborating on yesterday, trying to make you guys understand that without device here, the player to get the most MVPs, right? You need to turn to Dupree. You need to turn to Magus to hit the shots for yeah. Astralis to be a threat. And so if those guys are here now, well then, Astralis are cooking with gas. Yeah, there's no way you can brush over the fact that that device is not on the team. I mean, there's not many places in the world to look for a replacement for a player like device. There's just no way around it. So, um, yeah, they're going to have to double and triple down on, on some of these other players. Magus has been guarding T-Spawn for a while. Hanging out there. I like this move from Dumao. It's super high risk, but remember mm -hmm. Dupree was doing something similar. Not with an AWP, but he was pl he was playing in that same style. Dumao sneaking through, still scoped up, and the timing is just not with him. It's I still think it's a cool idea, but when it backfires like this, it is obviously going to be a bit of an issue. 50 seconds. Four on five here. Sip. Is just waiting for that smoke to fade. Still got about 40 seconds now. They are being slowed down. Phelps, he's been playing well on this ramp, but this time it's going to go against him. Lado able to trade the kill. That is at least something. 35 seconds. That Molotov, I don't know about that one. That just slows them down. Did they really need that? Mm. Maybe they feel like they've boxed him in with a follow-up grenade, but I feel like that actually is just slowing them down a lot. They still have a player in middle that's sort of lurking his way through. Dupree again on that angle. And that is so deadly. If they can get the pre into play, Barton, he reads it. What a great read from Barton. That is absolutely amazing. That might have just won them the round here. Bomb is going to be planted, but now it's a three on three. Grenade on top of them. Sip with a headshot, though. Oh, and he gets one more. It's all headshots at the end. Astralis, it just doesn't matter. That, that play from Barton is so good. And it, they get the nade that essentially destroys the entire team or yeah. the, whoever is left. And it doesn't matter. They peek into it, and Astralis hit all of the headshots with the AKs. That's it. One shot headshot makes all the difference for Astralis in that hold. And here's Dupree again. Highlight from him as he gets that flank. Some great fighting here from both of these players. But now, yeah, it's just it's just that Astralis, they've got that confidence to take those duels in the end. They just swing wide, and they're just like, right, I'm going to fight you now. I know that yeah. you need to come onto the bomb site, but I'm going to be the one to take the initiative and fight you instead, not let you be comfortable. Confidence and voodoo magic. And voodoo magic, yeah, you know, I don't hand know. in hand. There's something else going on in this game, man. It's not just about that. <laughs> Since time immemorial. There's some Viking stuff going on here. Anyways. I mean, what have you guys done? Do you reckon they sacrificed someone to Odin before this tournament started? Was that, uh, they had to they had to bring back uh, the OG uh, the OG gods? So, Amanita Muscari, perhaps. I don't know what's going on. They are, <laughs> they're just, uh, something is different about this game. I can't entirely put my finger on it, but... There's definitely something weird going on. Nice little boost up against USPs. Oh, don't be pulling out the nades. Yeah, he's got back up here. Got the whole crew with him. And that's going to be enough. Taco. Taco. Just pondering the meaning of life. <laughs> trying, to, <laughs> trying to feel the warmth of that diesel generator. He's like, just anything to, to, not, to not just feel cold and lonely. And right now, he's just uh, he's looking for the, the, what is it, the tailpipe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <doc. laughs> oh, poor taco. I um, just I really can't believe what we've seen here so far. Thirteen to eight is gonna be the score line. The money is starting to work out for Astralis once again. I just I don't know what it is. This is a way closer game, but it still feels like there yeah. are so many of these pivotal rounds where Godsend are even in the lead. They have things going their way and they are not able to find the wins.
in in those rounds. I mm. mean, it's so so obnoxious. It is. I mean, we, it is worth mentioning again to paint the picture that there is a gulf of experience between some of the players on Godsent and the multi-major champions that are Astralis. True. And so when when pressure is on. Like you said at the beginning, right? Astralis, they've been in all the situations before. For them, the only thing that they can really do is get on LAN and try to f make new experiences happen because if it comes to every everything else they've done, whereas for Godsent, this is an elimination match in a major. This is back to the wall, ultimate pressure in your career, and you're here going up against Astralis, right? All of that is weighing on you. And so it is worth mentioning, right, that uh, you know, Godsent, pretty heavy underdogs in this match all things considered and yet they are still managing to keep some of these rounds competitive that's the beauty of it nuke did not go their way the first map in this series astralis blasted him on it but here at least on uh, vertigo their map pick they're able to make astralis work for it look at megas he's here so quickly taco he's got the right idea and he will win that fight the follow-up as well great work from taco that's actually very easy to get fooled by because that nade that smoke that's down in front of glaive that's the one that Taco sort of puts down to try and slow them down so that they don't just sort of rush him. The fact that they were still there maybe could have caught him off guard. Phelps is going to be losing the fight over at the A ramp. That is unfortunate because that gives up the four on three that they had otherwise. Back into a three on three now. Ooh, now the bait and switch. There's no way that he's going to push B ramp though. All right now. And so Dumao was actually pushed into mid. This is going to be interesting. They've kind of given up on the, on the bomb side, haven't they? Yeah, but the bomb, is he going to be able to find the bomb? No way, if he finds the bomb. He, there it is. Oh, this is, what are they going to do? Are, can Astralis be aware of this, that this is a possibility? And everybody's just sitting and waiting? Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> they really are just, do Maui, he's pushing, that is, that seems very high risk to me. The fact that he's moving forward like this can actually give up a lot. He still should he be able to, to shoot Glaive in the back, but let's just wait and see. Glaive is going to be picking up the bomb. Lucky going down. Glaive trying to check as much as he can, but yeah, he has no way of knowing. That is a good move. It's all working out for Godsent in this round. Good stuff. Man, I, I'm so nervous when he starts moving forward like that. Yeah, it was definitely a bit of a clench moment there. But uh, that is such a monster flank, and it works perfectly. And then finding the bomb just like that, that that's it. It's Christmas come early. You got everything you wanted. You don't need to ask for, any, for anything more. Because uh, at that point, you know that somebody on Astralis has to come and pick up that bomb, and they're not going to be expecting you to be camping it. And so, brutal. Brutal for Astralis, but still, they've got a lead, and they have enough money for a buy. It's not the end of days yet, just yet, for Astralis. And while Godsent nicely done through the smoke, finding the kill. Get those AKs and play the damage you can do. They could turn this around. I mean, we're, we're going to be an inferno for the final game if it if it if it goes down to the final map here. But that'd be terrific. Just in terms of the score, I've got to say it again: thirteen to nine is totally winnable if you're on the godsent side. It's just that we're so we're so colored by the by the fact that they've been playing just with with a lot of misfortune on the god. It really feels like that. I don't know if I'm just overdoing it in my own brain, but it feels like so many things have gone against them if they can turn it around here and what is this Are they swapping out guns in in the middle of the ramp huh. that seems like a quick way to die <laughs> if someone peeks you while you're doing that there's nothing you can do about it i don't like seeing that i don't want to see that ever again L lado does go down but he did get take glaive with him so not all bad here four on three making a bit of noise running back lucky oh he's actually fighting two at once he's gonna get one of them can't get the follow-up and a good spray from phelps he's gonna be forced back but they are still in a really winnable position here. Megas now in a one versus three. He's being flanked as well. How does he even get out from behind this? Deep nade. Gonna do a little bit of damage. Shooting at the corpse is not going to help out either. And Megas backing up slowly, probably to his death. It's going to be Taco on the flank, and it'll be a tenth round for Godsend. No, very well done. It's still taking some getting used to. Okay, yeah, they are going to swap out for AKs. I was about to say, I'm, I'm still getting used to this idea that players are willingly running past AKs on the CT side. It's just not used to seeing that at all. But uh, they will go ahead and hold on to a couple of AKs, and we'll have them uh, uh, get into it after that. But uh, a must-win round for Godsent. Fortunately for Astralis, they get the bomb plant in that situation. So money should still be there for them to keep some pressure up. Yeah, that is uh, that's definitely a critical a critical thing, isn't it? Just keep the pressure yeah. on as much as you can. Even it like this, if it's yep, just yep, pistols yep. and armor, it's it's still just about trying to not let Godsent feel too comfortable. Phelps canceling the aggression. 
Yeah, and a near a full idea. set of nades means that they can get an execute going if they wanted to and really try and just smash Godsend here and talk about demoralizing. If they can do some serious damage to Godsend in this round, that'll be terrific for Astralis. Take some of those AKs back. But uh, now, patient play so far on ramp. Yeah, just, I mean, uh, this is a round where you have to be thankful that Godsend are not being very aggressive in this round, because again, if they walk into some of those deagles, that could be a bad time. So, so maybe this is one of those rounds where actually on the CT side, you just want to kind of wait it out and, and see what happens. Time for some of the Tech 9 run and gun. Methinks on this B site. Taco? Oh, if he goes down, it's a bit awkward. Just test it for a quick minute. Oh, Glaive catches him running up the stairs. A deagle headshot to bring down Taco. Still got 45 seconds, which on this map is quite a bit. I think at the moment, Phelps is checking the A ramp and trying to make sure. And actually, Deep Molotov to slow them down. This is so important for Phelps. It's not doing any damage, but he just has to know whether or not they're coming back to A. There's two players on B right now for Godsend, one in mid. Phelps is alone. Oh, wait, he's going to, yeah, hide behind the sandbags. They probably know he's there. Yep, they're going to Molotov him out, and he can't do anything about it. He goes for the fight, and they're not actually checking it. They throw the Molotovs without checking if anyone is there, and he gets a triple kill behind it. Lucky and Dupree, what do you do now? 15 seconds, you cannot fall back to the B bomb site. If you want to get the bomb plant, you just have to run and try and get the job done. You have to go and die. Yeah, actually. This is an eco round. What are you doing? Oh, Dupree's walking up behind them with an M4, so maybe they're like, all right, we can make this super expensive. He's going to miss that shot, though. This is an all-round weird sloppy round from Astralis. Throwing the Molotov into the sandbags was a great idea, but not checking if anyone was there, coming, being forced out, that's a big no-no. What a weird round. What a weird round. And unforced errors, Anders. You hit the nail on the yeah. head. Unforced errors for Astralis now, where you throw mollies and then don't look to see. The whole point of throwing that molly is to force someone out from behind those sandbags. You don't just throw It's not an HE. You don't just throw it and forget about it. You throw it and you watch to see if you're going to flush anybody out into the open. So unforced errors getting made here by Astralis. And I actually think it's a good time for Zonic to call for the timeout here and kind of slow down the pace here. Because now God's are going to start feeling like they can get back into this. God's are going to start feeling like things are starting to break their way and that this map pick of theirs can actually go their way. So now, you know, yep, Taco keeping his players cool, calm, and collected. And it's on Astralis now to get their heads in this and figure out what it is that they need to do because they didn't get a bomb plant that round. If they get a bomb plant that round, they have plenty of money. Whereas now, yeah, it's, it's going to be a little so questionable. They will have just enough, but they're light on nades. Going to be lacking a lit. A little bit, and the Galil in the mix as well, they're on Magus, so, so a, cu a couple of things that they could have had extra. But they should they should still be pretty lethal in this upcoming round. 13-11, it's, I mean, that gap is is really closing down right now. Godsend are taking all of the right steps, they're moving in the right direction. They just need to keep this up. Don't change the formula right now, just keep your eyes on the prize and get a, a victory on, on Vertigo. They could think about Inferno after that. But this is all about just making it through here and not getting knocked out in a 2-0 fashion. Lucky he's seen the helmet, I think. Oh, throwing up another nade. Yeah, okay. As long as the smoke is up, I feel like you could probably do that. Previous round where they had none, it was a bit more scary. Phelps is pushed down, playing inside of it. If they spam through here, there's not going to be any real recovery. He does take a couple of pot shots, but he'll start to fall back. Lave is down low again. Once again, finds himself at half, but he's been playing a lot of point, man. So really, him, as long as he has one HP, if he can just run in first and create a little bit of room, he'll be fine with that. Oh. So now, yeah, once again, Glaive kind of taking point, figuring out where these guys are holding from. Phelps shoots him in the face, though. Phelps has come alive in an absolutely dramatic fashion from the first half. I think he had something like four kills yeah. in the first half. He's really not doing a lot. And now he's up to 17. So almost catching up to Lado and Dumao there. They've been playing very well, too. This is actually a great, a brilliant comeback story right now for Godsend. I'm so impressed that they're able to mentally keep it together after everything they've been through in this best of three so far. Eight seconds on the clock. It's going to be Sip with the headshot. Lucky with the kill. The bomb gets planted. I thought maybe that was Sip mm -hmm. with the... To get it. The smoke he had in the right position, but it was not enough. And now Taco never going to be able to make it out of this one. Dupree with his 21st kill. Meg is gone 23. And Astralis getting a 14th round. They are two rounds away from knocking out. 
God send. Mm -hmm. And in a steady fashion in that round as well. No gimmicks here. Just slowly pressing up onto the bomb site, getting your smokes down, and then taking advantage of those smokes to get up onto the bomb site and get that bomb planted. But apparently not for these guys. 14 11. They have somebody to fight with here, but it is not perfect. You could tell that Deagle, that MP9, a sign of the crumbling economy of God sent. Indeed. Must win round for Godsend. This is it. Phelps, he got dropped real low with the beginning again. He's been playing brilliantly on this A ramp. In fact, I mean, a huge part of this first half is Phelps on the A ramp, basically. And talk about this now from Astralis. Oh, it's Taco. been so long that they have not, they haven't really shown any presence mid. And now, in this key round, they decide to put a couple of bodies in mid and see if they can catch somebody out there. Whoa, just the timing could not have been worse for Dupree. Yeah, and he got baited into that. Taco went and made the jump on the stairs and then walked back. And Dupree absolutely assumed that he'd walked all the way back in the bomb side. He didn't assume that he'd just, you know, fallen back to that little uh, half wall there. Barton's going to be going down, and they know that Taco's in there. They have all the information. They know that he's there with an MP9. This is oh, this flash. is a really, really good call. Flash doesn't do nearly anything, but it doesn't matter. Glaive will get the headshot. Dumao goes down, and it's a disaster for Godsend. Nothing short of it. Phelps and Lado, two versus four. You can't even go for it. You just have to, you have to give it up. You're going to need to give this round up and then fight like Tigers from here on out, Godsend. You'll have two rifles to hold on to, and we'll see what else they can scrap together here. Because there's no retaking this uh, site 2v4. And, I mean, it's just, when I get excited about that flash, it's that they really do know exactly yeah. where Taco is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's down to, and that's no probably mystery. almost instinctually, right? And you're like, uh, uh, yeah, let's set this set up. Set that flash over the top and uh, get rid of this guy. And and that is also just debris. I mean, that could have been even worse, but they managed to just make it work there, Astralis. 14 to 11. But I do like Astralis again. They've gone many rounds without showing any presence in mid at all. And here they finally put a couple of bodies in there. Finally put a couple of bodies in there, and it works. They get rewarded with a kill, and they get a rewarded. They get rewarded with that pathway onto the B-bomb site to take advantage of. And so now this is Astralis on match point, four of them. And Godsense don't have much money to work with. It's just going to be buying whatever you can here on Godsense side. A couple of MP9 so they can afford some grenades. And yeah, Taco just has to go for the pistol so you can afford some grenades. So this is it. All or nothing now for Godsent. Yeah, they need four rounds in a row so far. That's been very hard for them to find on on at en on any map in this best of three so far. They've been struggling pretty much all the way through. Deep nade there will blow up Lado just a bit. Dumao goes down. They needed kills, not the other way around. Dupree sneaking up and trying to get a bit close. Yep, they're going to have some backup there with Glaive taking down Taco. And it's just going to continue. We all knew where this was going to end the tragedy at least. At least it comes to an end at one point, Semler. They're not going to be tortured forever here. Phelps will get the kill on Lucky, but it seems like it is just too late. Phelps and Lado, two versus four, trying to hang on to their major hopes and dreams. And Astralis have heartlessly and cruelly just stolen them away from them. On, on two maps, it seems, I don't know what you could do to retake this bomb site. Bomb is already planted. They have many nades still left on that T side. They can keep grenading. The Phelps probably struck it over like saying, what can we possibly do here? Lining up for it. Glaive with the one kill. Ladder one, the other one. And God sent. There's nothing left here. The nade almost blows him up. But this has been a real return of Astralis as well. They're going to be sending them packing 16-11.